our experiment required uh, a nearly spherical cavity made out of two hemispheres. I called lots of companies that I thought might be able to manufacture this and everybody said they couldn't quite do it. And then I called up Paul Morantz at Cranfield and described what I wanted and he just said yes. It took a long time to get the final thing just right but when it was made it turned out to be the perfect shape. Everybody measures temperature. It's important for all kinds of things from baking to industrial manufacture to healthcare. And it's very important that temperature is measured accurately. It's critical in some industries. So the work we're doing is on the foundations of the way we measure temperature. The experiments we're doing here to measure temperature in terms of the energy of molecules in a gas. And the energy of the molecules is related to the speed that they're moving at. So the apparatus that Cranfield made for us uh, is a device for measuring the speed of molecular motion. And it does that by measuring the speed of sound in a gas. We learned to measure temperature in about 1840. Ever since then, it's been getting better and better. And with the apparatus that Cranfield had built, we feel like we've taken the ultimate step so far in, in the story of how you measure temperature. There was one thing which uh, arose our acoustic resonances, we discovered, were too narrow. Now this is completely inexplicable. So we went to a conference and to our great surprise, a theorist from the United States wrote to us and said, well, actually I'm working on a new theory of acoustic resonators and it predicts an extra correction. And in fact, it predicts exactly what you've just seen. So the precision of the resonator that Cranfield had made allowed us to see this extra detail of the physical world more clearly.